You want to stand up there with her? You good? Okay. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Would you please tell us your name? I'm Miranda McKay. Would you spell your last name for me? M-C-K-A-Y. And how old are you? Ten. Okay. Uh, did you uh, prepare a statement for today? Would you like to read it? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Hello, I'm Randall McKay. I'm the daughter of Andrew and Cassie McKay. I'm 10 years old in fifth grade. We, I'm here today to talk about the incident that involved my dad and how I was affected. Now I have anxiety because of what happened, but before I do that, I want to share with you a little bit about me. My hobbies are art, my favorite subjects, math. I do cross country and I wrestle. I also do 4-H, Girl Scouts and Awanas. I have a Great Dane, Molly, and a brother dog, Maximus. Besides creating things like playing games, going camping, and doing puzzles. Writing this has been a huge step for me, and I, I really struggle, especially because I am the one writing this. Every one of these words are mine. So I'm really here today to share with you how I've been affected because my dad was shot at. I was six years old in kindergarten when the shooting happened and I took a longer time to process what happened when my parents told me about it. When I first heard about the shooting, I remember thinking that if I was always with him, with my dad, then nothing could happen to him. He could never go away or be out of my sight. If he would leave, I would go into what I call the world of what ifs, wondering where he was and if he was okay. I'm not as bad as I was when I was younger, but I still have moments. These moments fill me with worry, stress, nervousness, and panic. I know I shouldn't feel this way all the time, but I do. In the beginning, I had bad separation anxiety from my dad, and it got so bad that if he left the room or went outside, I would freak out. I would search for him and follow him, and if I couldn't, I would cry a lot. I have somewhat gotten over the separation part, but I still struggle sometimes. If I am alone, I have generalized anxiety and paranoia now. I get that... I get really nervous really fast and spiral significantly faster than other kids. When I have a moment, it feels like I'm in a black hole and nothing else exists, and I'll need to get pulled out. I'll sweat and breathe heavily, and if you were to see me, you would see me breathing heavily, sort of bouncing, pacing, and talking nonsense slash gibberish. What that means is... Wait is how when I was younger and the shooting was still very, very fresh, I, I thought I was going crazy. So I have tics, no, not the bug, um, but the physical tics, meaning that I have weird and unusual habits, like I'll smell my hands randomly, opening my mouth and almost clicking my jaw and sc scraping the corner of my mouth and, and humming. I used to do these without realizing it, but now my parents T tell me and I can realize it when I'm doing it most of the time. In therapy I've learned that these are normal because I have stress and my therapist has shown me how to keep them more contained. I have been going to therapy for about four years now and at first I had no clue why I was going. I was very shy and did not want to open up. When I got more used to her and more comfortable I got more comfortable and more comfortable saying, with identifying my feelings and saying them out loud. I graduated therapy twice because I was managing my emotions and anxiety, but I would go back because those habits would re-sprout again, and I would go back because I would get bad again, um, and I would talk again, and she would give me a lot of new coping mechanisms she taught me a lot of different things about my anxiety. My th therapist found ways to sort of trick me into talking about my feelings before I got truly comfortable. It has been about four years of me going to her, but now it is more so me talking about my week, and right now I will most likely be in therapy for the rest of my life. For a long time, I've wanted to get it out somewhere 
where I could be heard in a bigger way than venting to my parents or sharing with my therapist. Like I said, pre like I previously mentioned, writing about my feelings and being here today has been very tough. I think about the shooting a lot, like when it's quiet, when people say triggering words. I think about it when I get lost in my thought and that memory just kind of sprouts itself in there and when I feel stressed or fearful. I really struggle and have mixed emotions about saying stuff that would weigh on Matthew because I have a more selfish side and a more Christian side. My selfish side comes from me being angry and hurt because of what he did to my dad and I want him to suffer because of it. But my Christian side thinks <coughs> that if he had better parents or a better home, he would not be where he is to today. Thank you for letting me share my story. Thank you very much.